Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Robert. I haven't, haven't done a Friday Reads video in a couple of weeks. My schedule has kind of been in flux while I'm in transition between Florida and North Carolina. Um, apparently we're still on schedule to close on the house on the 28th. So I only have another 10 days or so uh, before we actually close. And then I'll be going to the Decatur Book Festival that same weekend, the end of August. And so I probably won't actually get settled into my house until the first couple of days of September. But that's okay. That'll give some, the movers a chance to get things there. That'll give my decorator a chance to do her magic. And hopefully I can just move in and start arranging books. And that'll be the end of the transition period. Uh, it's been an interesting uh, good week for me. Yesterday, some of you may have seen on Twitter that I actually got to meet another booktuber. I met Jasmine from Jasmine's Reads. She is here in North Carolina um, with Cameron and visiting some of Cameron's family. And when I found out she was in Raleigh, which is only about 20 minutes away from me, we arranged to meet at um, Quail Ridge Books, which is one of my favorite independent booksellers. And in fact, the last time I had been there, it's been several years, of course, since I've been down in Florida, but they've moved to a, a newer and bigger location and their, their store is just gorgeous. I'm really impressed with the new location. Um, when I first moved to North Carolina, I think it was right as my second book was coming out and Quail Ridge hosted my very first um, author's event on that second book tour. So it was, it's kind of been a, a fond memory of a, a bookstore for me anyway. So it was fun to go see their new location yesterday and spend about 90 minutes with Jasmine and Cam wandering around talking about books and talking about the differences in book cultures in England and in the United States. So that was great. Um, I'm going to go over a few of the books that I finished in the last couple of weeks just super quickly um, because I don't remember when the last Friday Reads video I made was. Um, so I guess on one of my read-alongs, uh, I, after I finished Portnoy's Complaint, I read um, Stay With Me by Adebayo Ayubami. Um and I think I talked about that one in one of my previous videos, but if not, just a quick wrap up. I I really loved the first half of this book. Uh, the second half of the book started to lose focus for me, or maybe I lost focus on it. But every time I started to think, ho-hum, ho-hum, another disaster would strike in that book. Um, and so it was. It, it it's a very touching story, and of course everybody's talked about it, so I'm not going to go into the details too much there. But I really enjoyed that one. It was one of the ones I intended to read as part of the Reading Women's Month podcast challenge, and I just didn't get to it in time, so I decided to pick it up. Um, and I finished that one right at the beginning of August. And then uh, I did. I finished The Return, which was the read-along uh, nonfiction title by uh, Hisham Matar, and I did a full video on that, so I won't talk about that much here. Um, the next book I finished was Ann Tyler's A Spool of Blue Thread, and this is the book that has been on my TBR list the longest. I got it as part of a gift exchange with some faculty members two Christmases ago, and I just hadn't gotten a chance to get to it, so I finally picked that up. Um, like most of Ann Tyler's books, it's a family drama. Um, it's as the the matriarch and patriarch of the family start to age it's about how the the their children interact with both them and the house that the the father has been tied to he's a builder uh, and it's a delightful story i really love the way ann tyler writes i don't think it's her best book by any means uh, but it's been so long since i've read any ann tyler that it was kind of nice to draw me back into ann tyler and i'm reading another one of her novels, Celestial Navigation, soon as part of my read-along series. So it's kind of nice to break back into her that way. The next book that I finished, finished me. I was just beaten down by this book. And I'm a fan of Joseph Campbell's work with mythology and structural um, 
archetypes. And so I decided to go back and reread um, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, where he l outlines his idea of the monomyth, the, the myth story or the myth journey that the hero goes on in so many cultures, mythologies, and narrative histories. But the book itself was just really hard to read for me because he's going through such arcane examples in such detail that I just was bored out of my mind. I wanted the overall structure that he was talking about, and I didn't want all the academic background material. And so I really struggled to finish that book. I probably should have DNF'd it, but I really wanted to see if there was something that I was missing at the end that I needed to get to. Uh, but I did finish it, finally. The next book I finished was absolutely a shocking, wonderful experience for me. I picked up The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, I am not a huge Hollywood, especially vintage Hollywood buff. I don't know that much about the movie industry, don't really follow it or care about celebrity culture very much. But this book really just got to me. Um, it's about a, a woman who goes to Hollywood fairly young, um, back in the 50s, and then it covers her entire career and her marriages to seven different people. Um, and it sounds like a typical superficial Hollywood type story, but it's not. It's, it's far more a story about identity, about um, protecting the people that you love in the face of an intrusive society like they live in, in in Hollywood. There is something about the film industry in there, but I think that takes a back seat to the family story and the love stories uh, that surround Evelyn Hugo. And it's told through a really interesting frame. Evelyn Hugo is near the end of her life, and she arranges for a young, um, culture reporter, culture writer, to interview her under the guise of giving her magazine um, a feature story on her career. And it turns out that was all just a ruse. She wanted to get that particular writer to do a story about her, but she wanted to give her the authorized biography and all the actual details of Evelyn Hugo's life. And so that's what it becomes. The, the novel itself is her going through her memories of each of these seven men and everything in between and giving the, the stories to the writer. And of course, there are wonderful connections between the writer and the story. And it's it, it's just a wonderful book. I was reading four or five books at the same time while I was reading that. And I kept finding myself putting the other books down and going back to Evelyn Hugo again and again and again. So I really enjoyed it. It surprised me. It's one of my favorite reads of the year so far. And I didn't really expect to be that fond of it. And the other book that I just finished, which I'm not going to talk about today because I'll be doing a full video on it for the read-alongs, is Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God, which is a novel I've read a number of times. I've taught a number of times. Uh, it was on the syllabus for me to teach in my final year um, in Florida, but I left in December, and so uh, I didn't teach the spring semester, which is when it was scheduled. So I hope the students still had the opportunity to read it because I just think it's a wonderful novel. Uh, but I'll talk about that more when I do my read-along video. So what am I reading now? Um, right now I'm reading three or four books. Um, I started Otessa Moshfeg's My Year of Rest and Relaxation. Um, because I am signed up to be a judge for the Mako Prize this year, and I had read three of the four books in, I think it's Group G, already, and so I volunteered to be a judge for that group because it meant just having to pick up one additional book, and that was the additional book. Uh, I really think that Moshveg is a talented writer, but I am struggling to care about this book or to care about the character or to see what the point is. It's another one of these books where pretty writing does not hold up in the face of a stupid story. And to me, it's a stupid story. I mean, the whole point is this, this somewhat privileged young woman, um, her parents are dead and she's got a trust fund. She's wealthy. 
Um, she's good looking. She works in an art gallery because her degree is in art history, but she doesn't really take it too seriously because she doesn't really need the job. She decides she wants to check out of society for a year um, and sleep. And so she sets up an arrangement with a psychotherapist and she lies to her constantly to get better and more frequent prescriptions for better drugs to keep her knocked out. And that's really the whole point of the book is her trying to sleep a year away. That to me is a pretty sad premise, but whatever. Um, I think this is another one of those books, and I'm going to offend somebody when I say this, but it's probably one of those books that younger readers, millennials, will think this is profound and brilliant, and older readers will think this is stupid and pathetic. I may be wrong, but that's just my, my sense of it. I'm about halfway through right now, and I'm really struggling to care about the other half. Needless to say, it's not going to get rated very highly on my ballot for the Mako Prize. Um, the other one I just started is one my first library book from the Durham County Library. It's a new release, uh, The Masterpiece by Fiona Davis. And I have not read her previous book. I wanted to read The Address, but I haven't read that yet because that got a lot of good notice too. Uh, so this is my first book by her. And it's the story of two different women uh, in New York City. And it starts off in 1928 with an artist named Clara who's teaching at a, an art school that is actually housed in Grand Central Station. Uh, and she's the only woman on the faculty and she's kind of socially awkward and she's trying to make a name for herself both as an illustrator and trying to fit in with the teaching culture there and she's struggling to do both uh, in the 1928 society. Obviously. The Depression is coming, so I haven't got to the part of the book yet where that has its huge effect. But you know there's a big effect from that because the other half of the story is in 1974, and it's set around a woman named Virginia who is recently divorced from an attorney. Uh, she's had to go back to work, and she wor she starts working as a temp for the law firm um, that is in charge of Grand Central Station. And she trips over by accident this abandoned art school that we know is where Clara was teaching. So obviously the school has disappeared and she sees some of the paintings that are gathering dust in these back storage rooms. And so I'm really curious to see how these two different women's lives are going to keep intersecting in various ways. And so far, I'm not that far into the book, but it's it's been pretty enjoyable. I like her writing style. So I'm really looking forward to, to reading more of that. Um, the, the other book that I'll be starting later today is the next read-along for the 100 Great Books, which is Hard Times um, by Charles Dickens. And it's one I've read a lot, but it's been a long time since the last time I read it. So I'm looking forward to reading some, some Dickens again. So that's pretty much it for what I'm reading right now. Um, had a golf lesson this morning, um, just kind of hanging out this weekend, uh, probably play a little bit more golf next week. It's still really hot and humid here right now. I, I think I dragged Florida's heat up here with me, um, but it's not far from fall coming around the corner. So when the temperatures start dropping a little bit, I'll be glad to have seasons again. Um, South Florida winters are wonderful. It's nice to be able to go out and it's mid 70s in January, but other than those two or three months of winter weather that are so glorious in Florida, the rest of the year is pretty tough to take for those of us who don't love heat. Um, North Carolina gets hot too, but it's not hot 11 out of the 12 months. It's, it's pretty mild the rest of the year, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think that's all I have for you today. I'll have my video on Their Eyes Were Watching God for the read-along video in the next day or two. And in the meantime, if you're reading along with me, I have shifted over to the Hard Times uh, read-along for this week. Hope everybody's going to have a great weekend. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these or if you're about to read any of these and what your thoughts are. And I'm trying to get back into a normal routine on, on videos and my reading schedule. I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.